All right, everyone, welcome to this lunar eclipse sidereal astrology forecast. This is for August 7th of 2017 and the lunar eclipse in Capricorn. Yes, Capricorn, if you were expecting me to say Aquarius, check the link down below because the signs are different in this uh, form of astrology called sidereal, different from mainstream. So um, check that out. Lunar eclipse, Capricorn, very important time of the year. Always a transition, right? And uh, this one having to do with this south node, uh, which is a spiritual part of the chart. It's about past life. It's about past energy in this life. And what we can become more aware of within ourselves, spiritually, unconsciously, you know, the, the unconscious mind from all of these patterns and stuff that we've built or that have created cycles in our being and even in our emotions, right, that we're still unconsciously perhaps holding on to. So the lunar eclipse, when it's conjunct the south node, is about releasing. And it's about releasing these attachments, these yearnings, these comforts, these security blankets, because we've spent so much time with these energies. So collectively with Capricorn, what's essentially taking place is now this lunar eclipse, this full moon type of energy is now illuminating all of this inner stuff. Now with Capricorn, the seagoat, this could be a really good time collectively to examine, to see if there is anything in your life or any qualities within yourself that might be over extreme with Capricorn. Okay, it could be maybe overly cautious. Is there anything in your life you're being perhaps overly cautious with? Or do you feel that sort of quality within you? Maybe very reserved, sometimes overly reserved with this, right? Is there anything that's you know preventing you because you want that security or something like that, that familiarity that uh, might be creating an over reserve in your being? Okay, also maybe anything involving achievement and success, which can sometimes be the case with Capricorn. And are there any structures in your life that you've built that might be that security blanket? So uh, very good to do this status check. And I think what's gonna happen is there's gonna be this transition from this, uh, from this lunar eclipse where we're then gonna be shifting our path because the nodes always do have to do with our life path. And in this case, through this awareness of this past life energy, we can take some weight off, right? If in, in the analogy of the life path, we might be taking that backpack off or opening the backpack to see what no longer serves us, what we're removing from the backpack to create more space and less weight. So very good time to do that. Uh, there's a couple other things with this lunar eclipse. It's gonna be opposite up to Mars, training up to Jupiter. Um, the sun's going to be shifting into Leo around the same time. And I'm also going to talk about two Saturn in a Fucus, uh, because Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. So Saturn in a Fucus has been about healing and all this deeper stuff associated with it. All right. So let's go and look at this in more detail here in just a few seconds. Alright, so there is the chart for the lunar eclipse. It's going to be at 1420 Eastern Time. It's going to be a partial lunar eclipse. Um, you can see that by the proximity to the nodes, uh, but still always very important. And if you do want to see it, it is going to be in Europe and the East. So if you want to get outside to take a look at this, um, it could be very important for you. It's always good to integrate the energies with the actual physical you know, time period and, and the, the synchronicities that happen in your life at that time. But anyways, for all of us, a very important Monday here, and I would say the surrounding days. Uh, again, really good for doing the status check, right? Taking the time, even though this is like a full moon, right? The lunar eclipse is a full moon where there is energy and there is this, you know, more active spirit. We're more out into the world and perhaps busy or doing things, but taking the time to go within and see again if there is anything that uh, we are becoming more aware of that might be that security that we may want to let go of. So listen to your inner guidance, right? This astrology is just meant to confirm whatever you're automatic, whatever you're already feeling, right? And so if you're guided to, if your inner guidance is telling you there's something to release, maybe having to do with this Capricorn energy, 
you'll find that this could be an excellent time for bringing more balance back to this area. So that's what happens. As we release any of these over under extremes with Capricorn, whether it's the reserve, the overachievement, the structure, the cautiousness, it will help bring more balance back to this area. And so balanced energy with Capricorn is patience, right? Healthy patience, right? Without avoiding the future and without avoiding the growth and the development, but taking things one step at a time. Also too, this can help bring some balance back to discipline, right? Where we can do healthy work, right? And, and discipline's also patience too with time, but also doing the work, taking the steps, you know, building or taking steps along the life journey one step at a time, climbing that mountain one step at a time with the sea goat, but always being rooted in our spiritual beingness, which is the bottom half of the sea goat. It's the water, right? It's the connection to the water. So being connected to our soul, to our roots. So, um, so anyways, do check your weekly. This is going to be in a particular house for you. So you definitely want to check out which house this is, but collectively, certainly these structures in our life being restructured and, and this awareness that's going to help us perhaps release some things and make some changes here so we can have the healthier qualities of this patience, discipline, and long-term perspective. I do want to say too, on a more collective, like outer level, you know, Capricorns also are societal structures. So governments, uh, economic systems, we could expect um, over these, basically over this next year, year and a half with the South Node transit in Capricorn, these things to be transforming. And this lunar eclipse could certainly be emphasizing maybe some societal structures as well uh, being uh, restructured. So um, let's look at some of these aspects. The um, lunar eclipse is going to be opposite up to Mars, who's been in Cancer, not the best place for Mars to be in, uh, debilitated in fact. And with the opposition, it does tend to bring out the unhealthy qualities of Mars. So it could very well be these surrounding days if you're feeling a bit restricted. If there's restriction, like you're wanting to break through, break free, but there's, you know, something preventing or limitation or something like that. And it's mostly within with cancer. All right. So it could be two halves of our being on one half. We have, we have this awareness about the big picture. And then on the other half, we have these, this inner world, which has got a lot of this energy trying to express itself. So there could be a bit of that, you know, difficulty to connect to that inner world. But I do, as I have been recommending healthy ways of expressing this, whether it's through physical exercise or activity with Mars and Capricorn, maybe channeling some of that motivation and drive into your intrinsic values, such as home or family or your health even, and all in all, just connecting to your feelings and to your emotions, right? And, and that act of connecting to our soul, to our beingness, to our body, to our emotions, it will help us connect to that Mars in healthier ways. So if you are feeling a bit restriction, agitation, maybe impatience, bringing some extra attention to connecting to the body, to the emotions, to the inner world, and balancing that too with seeing that, as I was saying, things take time. This Capricorn is integrating these now healthy qualities of this patience and discipline, which is not Mars's forte. I mean, Mars does like to be in there when he's in there, but in this sort of opposition, on one hand, we've got the things we want now, which is Mars, and then the things that we want later or that are taking time, which is Capricorn. So as I was saying, taking the steps now, using that Mars energy, but with that patient perspective. All right, so that's gonna be important. Mars is pretty close to this opposition. I'm still within a few degrees of that sun. So this could be a, a strong energy to it. And I think an important consideration here of balancing that. Um, the other side to it, which is going to be very strong too, though, is Jupiter trining up to this lunar eclipse. So very supportive energy from Jupiter. Jupiter is about hopefulness, inspiration, opportunity, perhaps. So there's this side of it as well. And I think it is a really good time to, um, as I said, see the big picture, but here in such a way um, as seeing the open horizons, expanding your belief systems, expanding what you think is possible. Because again, like I've, as I've always been saying, especially with Pluto and Sagittarius, you know, our beliefs really do determine our reality. Not just in the sense of, you know, we can sit back and dream things and they happen. But if we have limiting belief systems, we limit ourselves to those potentials. 
So I think we're very hopeful with this. I think we're very inspired with this trying to Jupiter, which is very nice, very supportive. And there could even be perhaps some opportunities uh, shaping up with uh, this lunar eclipse, depending on your personal chart. All right, so those are the two aspects with it. Very important, um, supportive and challenging, a little bit of both. Um, challenging perhaps with that Mars energy, but as I said, there's a healthy way of expressing that and we can get quite a bit done in that bigger picture perspective. And then with Jupiter, expanding our mind, potentials, tapping into that adventurous spirit for the life path, right? That could be a very supportive force for this. So the other thing I wanted to mention is how Saturn is in a Fucus retrograde, the ruler of Capricorn, the dispositor of this lunar eclipse. So I think it's going to be quite deep um, on many levels because wherever the ruler is, it's saying that it's through this sign in this case that we are cultivating this, uh, this spiritual development and this life path transition. So with Saturn in a Fucus, it has been for about the past year and even two years if you factor in the Scorpio energy as well. Uh, there's been a lot of this needing for us to really heal. And this is what Saturn's been helping us do the work with, right? Just like Capricorn, Saturn is about doing the work. But in a Fucus, it's the work of healing. It's the work of diving deep to see if there's anything about ourself that we can accept. Perhaps some wounds, perhaps some traumas, perhaps some deep psychological things that have happens or whatever, but we've brushed under the rug and we sort of avoid it as we do naturally as human beings. So with Saturn in a Fucus, it's been the time to lift up that rug, to become more aware of our wounds, our traumas, our fears, our inhibitions, these deep things about ourselves and even perhaps about life that as we accept, it's really the key with the Fucus is acceptance. It's through the acceptance of these wounds or whatever it is, that we heal. And so I think it's going to be a very healing lunar eclipse. As I said, it's going to be bringing up a lot of this. So it could be bringing up a lot of these wounds. So any internal healing you can do at this time, I think is helping, helping you align to this lunar eclipse. And there's always layers. There's always more or less we can do. But the point is, is that the more open we are just with ourselves, and there's nothing we really need to do with this. It's just becoming more aware of this inner world. Um, and doing this work, whatever that means, confronting the wounds, taking action steps towards the face of those wounds. I think it can really assist this healing process. But I think the healing's happening anyways. Um, as I said, it's a transition. And so there's now this shift of fundamentally releasing this past energy that might be overly cautious, overly reserved, overly concerned with the structures in our life that then helps free us up. And in a couple of weeks, we are going to have a solar eclipse in Leo, which is going to be more of the new life path direction because it's the North Node and the solar eclipse is about new beginnings, which has to do with self-expression, creativity. And as I've been saying, learning about what gives us passion, what's close to our heart and us expressing ourselves, what, what, what invokes that sense of fun and playfulness, creativity in our life and developing that. But of course, before we go into that shift, into this new beginning in a couple of weeks, right now it's suggesting this transition of um, letting some things go, whatever that means for you personally. And again, I think it just means becoming more aware of the, the unconscious, right? The spiritual dynamics, the past life energy that as we release, it frees us up and it brings more balance back to it as well. So um, in terms of that, you can also think back to February. I do want to mention that's when we had the solar eclipse with the South Node. So that was the new beginning with a lot of this healing and transition and past life energy. So if there has been anything since February, you've been working on with this on the spiritual level. It could be a high point, could be a transition, right? You're going to notice that there's a status check perhaps about some of those things and uh, continuing, right? Continuing to transition along the journey. In terms of now it's this awareness about what you've healed, what you've done, and what you can continue to do spiritually um, as we move forward. Um, another thing I want to mention is how the sun is in Leo. So it is starting to uh, lay the foundations for the solar eclipse in a couple of weeks. In fact, we've already had Mercury in Leo, who is going to go retrograde, I believe, later this week after Monday. So there's going to be a lot to learn about Leo. And that's already been the case with the North Node here. Right, as I've been talking quite a bit about learning about 
what we find fun, playful, expressive, creative. All right, and so um, it's sort of laying the foundation. So I think with the sun shifting in here early this week, um, around this lunar eclipse, seeing where you can focus on expressing yourself, focus on your creative side, having a bit of fun, playfulness, all of that, and, and that should um, sort of segue into, and all the stuff we learn about all of this as well for these next couple of weeks, I think will be the sort of fuel for the new beginnings around the corner. All right, so that is the lunar eclipse in a nutshell. Let me go ahead and pull up the transit graph for those of you that want to see the exact aspects um, when they're taking place, but 1420, 220 Eastern time, um, is when the actual lunar eclipse is going to be. And uh, there's that opposition up to Mars, and there is that trine up to Jupiter. Pretty close, in fact, to this lunar eclipse. No other major things going on, but this is major enough. All right, lunar eclipse, very powerful time of transition, um, very powerful time along the life path. And in this case, with the south node, becoming more aware of any security blankets that we can let go of to free ourselves up and continue along the life journey. All right, so I hope you guys have a fantastic lunar eclipse. Thank you so much for all of your likes, comments, and shares with this video. If you'd like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comments section, but I'll see you very soon for the next weekly forecast. Take care.